Okay, uh, my name is Matt, and I'm also on the affirmative side for uh, getting uh, passing uh, Puerto Rico as the 51st state of the United States. Um, first off, I want to counter some of the arguments from the negative side of the debate. Uh, the first thing that was mentioned uh, was the economy, and uh, Mike said uh, that getting or passing uh, Puerto Rico as the 51st state would harm their economy, um, and that the standard. Uh, because the standard of living would rise for the people, it would make them poor. Um, well, based on national, uh, studies conducted by uh, noted economists, such as those working for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, it is projected that Puerto Rico as a state will actually contribute to, rather than be dependent upon the U.S. taxpayer. Um, and as projected, uh, Keith mentioned before, that um, it's been projected that Puerto Rico will co actually contribute two billion dollars to the U.S. Treasury every year through economic growth, with more jobs, fewer unemployed, and less public assistance burden. Um, to counter your claims, with the average income going up, um, families will be able to pay their taxes more while improving their net income and standard of living, not becoming poorer as the uh, the standard of living went up. Um, you mentioned that half the population lives in poverty. Well, uh, that's judged by U.S. standards, and you can't compare Puerto Rico's economy uh, by U.S. standards because uh, the Puerto Rico aver average hourly wage is $8.08, .08, and that's <coughs> not the minimum wage. The minimum wage is between $4.25 to $7.25, depending on the industry. Uh, the U.S. average hourly wage is $18.65, and the minimum wage at the federal level is $7.25 per hour. Um, Puerto Rico, uh, their wages are a lot less than the United States, and we can't compare them um, to the United States standards. Um, let's see. And so that, um, your stat that 50% light underneath the U.S. poverty level, um, kind of refutes that because they can't be compared uh, to the same standard. Uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the U.S. Census Bureau both record poverty statistics for the United States, but they have their own calculations for the poverty income level, which are not defined for Puerto Rico. Um, uh, Puerto Rico uh, has their own federal, level, federal poverty level, and it's roughly equal to half of it, about uh, 22% below their poverty line. <clears throat> um, also, let's see, you talked about, um, well to back up the economic side a little bit more, uh, Keith mentioned before comparing uh, Hawaii and Alaska uh, when they became states and their economy. Um, when Hawaii and Alaska were admitted to the United States, their economies grew substantially after being admitted to the Union and became net contributors to the U.S. Treasury. Um, a quote from a Department of Economics Chair Sumner LaCroix, uh, the transition from territorial to statehood status was one factor behind the 1958 to 1973 boom in Hawaii, which in real capi per capita and personal income increased at an annual rate of 4%. Um, in Alaska, the gross domestic product is $44.9 billion in 2007, with 1.4 million tourists. In Hawaii, the gross domestic product was $61.3 billion, with 6.5 million tourists. And last, uh, in 2008, Puerto Rico's gross domestic product was $88 billion, with 5.9 million tourists. And if they become a state, they will experience an economic growth and uh, will contribute all of uh, that towards the United States. Um, also, another thing you mentioned was language. Um, you claimed um, that it would be a detriment and that um, most of them speak English, or I mean Spanish. Um, you said that 80 to 90 percent of the country speaks just only Spanish. Um, I found a fact here. According to the U U.S. Census Bureau of 2006, 81% of Puerto Ricans over five years old that live in the island speak English. Um, Governor Luis Fortuno of Puerto Rico stated, 
that over 90% of parents explicitly state that they want their children to be totally fluent in English. Um, and you mentioned before that Spanish is the only language in Puerto Rico. Well, Puerto Rico has two official languages, Spanish and English. And um, Spanish is the primary language, but English is taught as a secondary language in public and private schools, from elementary levels to high school and universities. And uh, English is also used in Puerto Rico um, in all U.S. government agencies in Puerto Rico, and it's the common language there in banking, commerce, real estate, and tourism. Um, Spanish is the second most common language in the U.S. and is spoken by over 12% of the population here. And the United States holds the world's fifth largest speaking population, outnumbered only by Mexico, Spain, Argentina, and Colombia. So it wouldn't be a detriment to have uh, Puerto Rico as a state. And you mentioned uh, something as having Spanish as a precondition uh, for joining the union. Um, well, Puerto Ricans have already been uh, citizens of the United States since 1917 when the Jones Act was passed. There was no language requirement with the granting of citizenship then, and there has never been a language requirement for territories entering the Union in our history. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out is that uh, you did not address our military argument, and I have more facts to back up our argument on that. Uh, throughout history, the citizens of Puerto Rico have always responded to the call of defending our nation in the name of liberty. Uh, since 1899, Puerto Ricans have fought, bled, and died under the American flag, uh, suffering more casualties proportionally than the majority of the states. Um, Puerto Rican participation in the U.S. Armed Forces is disproportionately greater than that of the 50 states in the United States and um, over 200,000 Puerto Ricans have fought in the U.S. since World War I.